Hey everyone, so on this episode of Make It With Calvin, I'm kind of taking you through the design process for how I do things and why, even though I can still produce things myself using all my 3D printers, I still prefer to send things out to be commercially printed. So let's talk about it. So first things first, I decided to put together this little, you could say, demo scene diorama whatever you want to call it of a little bucket unloading mechanism that I've come up with for one of my model train scenes now this is part of a project that I've been working on off camera off and on where I have this little island railway that harvests pumice and sulfur and other volcanic minerals and it goes from a volcanic island and then gets sent either by a rail ferry or by a bridge out to the mainland where things get dealt with pretty simple concept but it's actually kind of cool it gives me some opportunity to mess around with modeling and do some things that I normally wouldn't do that aside the thing is I have these little six foot rail cars that I came up with that are what are called end of dump cars so the end opens up and the product falls out as opposed to say like the side dump car where the sides open up and the product falls out so I have these and I need a way to unload them so that way they can get loaded into a full size rail car and then hauled off to their appropriate end consumers, which is off the layout and that doesn't matter. Thing is though, being that I model narrow gauge, there are unloaders that you can buy, but they're generally for HO or O scale, neither of which I model. I model O and 30. So it's O scale, but it uses HO track. It kind of puts me in a tight spot. The other thing is my modules are tiny, so I, I can't have this thing that takes up like half the available space. It would look really stupid and not be very efficient. So the plan was, well, heck, I know how to 3D design and know how to 3D print why not come up with something myself so this is what i came up with i have a very simple little pit here and then we have an unloading arm this one's an earlier prototype so it doesn't have the little um, thing on the end the chute if you will and then we also have an unloading pit now like with anything railroad related, I did a fair bit of research on Google Images, looked around and found some useful stuff, but I couldn't really pinpoint one particular thing because my setup is unique. Normally they don't use end dump cars, they use the hopper cars that have a couple of the V shapes underneath, those pull underneath the grate, product drops out, goes into an underground conveyor system, yada, yada, yada. So I kind of decided, you know what? Bucket elevators do exist and conveyor belts do have limitations on the maximum angle that they can haul things at, especially if it is a product that is of a non-uniform size. I kind of went down the rabbit hole on this project, probably a bit more than I needed to, but I wanted to make sure that what I was doing actually had some basis in real life. I know bucket elevators exist, they're used a lot in grain and things like that because you can haul something literally straight up and then into a silo or whatever. And in this case, I figured, you know what, because they're gonna be hauling product of a non-uniform size, let me just put a bucket elevator on there and it kind of looks cool too. And I can get away with a pretty steep angle on that. If I was to use a conveyor belt, it would have to be like, I believe this is about 45 degrees, it would have to be like at least half that and I said no there's no way that's going to fit the scene so all that aside I kind of decide I'm going to do a freelance um, realistic thing so going back to this for the pit itself that was pretty simple because the car is dumping out at the end I didn't need nor want any more space on the sides than I needed and realistically the car only has to pull in just enough for the end to be opened up and the product to fall out and then if the guys need to they can get in there with some shovels and shovel it out. Good old manual labor solves a lot of problems. So the pit itself was pretty simple being that the base of the layout is only about an inch thick I decided to make this so it had a fair bit of depth for visual reasons 
but it was still shorter than the depth of the foam itself. And I figured if somebody is gonna be using this on their personal layout, if they have to punch a hole in their layout or whatever, that's up to them, but that made things simple. Now, the other thing that was important was it needed to have the rails running through it because there will be multiple rail cars. They can get pushed down and unloaded as necessary. There'd be more room on either side, obviously. But designing this was relatively simple. And I also included a little brace on the underside there for the rails because otherwise they'd be hanging in space and that's not a great idea. And then lastly, I modeled it so that it looks like the rails are running through the fake concrete at the edge of this. I intentionally did not make the fake concrete edge any bigger than I needed to. I figured if I really wanted to, I could always go back and laser cut a bigger base for it. But the idea is I'm trying to make these as tiny as possible. It's easier to make things larger and why pay for extra printing cost if I don't need to and material and all that good stuff. So that was pretty simple. I did come up with a larger version though, which is this, which is designed for a side dump car, which I'm just gonna set over this so you can kind of see. You can see how that would make sense both um, width-wise and length-wise as well. And depending upon the demand, if somebody wants something bigger, I potentially can do that for an extra fee. We'll figure that out. I kind of want to see how people make of this and go from there. Now, moving on to the unloader, I mean the other loading mechanism or the product yeeter, whatever you, whatever term you want to use for it, this is where things got a bit fun. Now, obviously, because we're using the bucket elevator, really all I needed was something that went into the ground and then the product could come out. But I also wanted it to be something that could almost work as its own standalone unit. Now let's say that there was a, I don't know, like a silo here or something like that. I want to have the ability to add on to this should the scene permit it, depending upon what somebody's gonna use it for. So I intentionally modeled this area in the back with a grate so you could either have it so, I don't know, guy with a wheelbarrow, another conveyor belt or something dumps into it. Maybe there's a screen to sort out the product. You kind of get the idea. I'm trying to leave it open-ended so the end user can modify it to fit their needs. But, all that aside, we have the pit, use the same modeling criteria of it can't go below an inch deep on the inside and also kind of went simple on the outside. I did, however, model in these arms which lock into the bucket elevator, which is a leftover from a rock crusher project that I had. And then at the bottom, there's a through hole in this that acted as a pivot on the rock crusher. And in this case, it actually acts as the locating point. So you can just put a wooden dowel or something like that in there to lock it in position. So this is at the right angle. Now, if you really wanted to adjust the angle as well, you could do that, but you know. Besides the point, like I say, it's really, it's kind of trying to make this as simple and cheap and economical as possible. Now, let's get into why I'm prototyping these, in this case with GTEx Matte PLA, because it looks similar-ish to concrete, and why I'm not probably going to print these myself and then sell them. Well, in short order, the bucket elevator itself is very complex to print. And quite honestly, it's just easier to pay somebody to take the headache off my hands. See you guys later. The point is, for something especially as detailed as this bucket elevator, I can't get the same level of quality even if I jumped over oops, to my Moai. I can't get that same level of quality out of this and also this is something that's potentially going to go to shows and as much as 95 percent of the show going population are very well behaved accidents do happen people do bump into things trains derail things like that and i want something that's tough this is sls nylon short of hitting this thing with a blowtorch it is darn tough now the only reason why i went with sls nylon over the usual multi-jet fusion that i run is for price reasons this was actually cheaper in sculpteo's economy mode which takes longer but hey you can actually save some serious money with it so i don't mind in most situations 
And I like the fact that I could dye it a color other than black and trying to paint something this complex is just, forget it, it's a pain in the butt. So for the bucket elevator, 100% worth it to send it out to somebody to have them take the headache off my hands. I owe the guys out at Sculpteo like a bunch of wine and cheese and bread or something because they do some amazing work. Now when it comes to the pit itself, yeah, if I, if I really wanted to, I could probably print these myself, but it kind of goes back to why. The reality is between my job and my personal life and trying to run a YouTube channel, it, it's just, it's not worth it for me to sit here and spend hours with a 3D printer trying to get some prints run and all that stuff. My time personally is better spent paying the money for somebody else to take care of it than trying to do it myself. And that's not to say that I can't or won't do prints myself. I definitely will do them, but I see my 3D printers as more as prototyping tools to rapidly produce something and go, hey, this works, because I'll be honest, I was thinking this was gonna work for more stuff, and then I'm holding this up going, oh, oh, yeah, that's, um, that's not gonna work. So that's where having the 3D printer really comes in handy is for that rapid, rapid iteration that is very common and finding problems. So you don't spend 20 bucks on a print and shipping and wait four weeks and have it come on and go, oh, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. That is annoying. I've been there and I've done that and I don't like doing that. So that's the one thing that I appreciate about being able to rapidly iterate things. Also, the strength of it is a lot higher. The consistency is a lot higher. So that's the main reason why I will spend the money to use an external source to print things. I mean, these little rail cars were probably about seven, eight bucks a piece, and I can't consistently produce them for that kind of money on my own. Trust me, I've tried. It's not worth my time. So that, in a nutshell, is how my workflow process goes. Now. It doesn't matter if you're building stuff for yourself, for others, it doesn't matter. Personally, I see no shame in using commercial printing services to print things. I kind of feel like people have almost like this stigma that it's like, well, if I can't produce it myself, then um, does, that, does that mean that I'm part of the 3D printing community? Oh, no, you're totally a part of it. It just means that you're wise enough to know the limitations of what you have and work around them. And I feel like that's something that it, it comes with time. I've worked in manufacturing long enough to know when it's worth it to just pay somebody else to take care of it versus do it yourself. And in this case, I feel like it's better for me to just pay somebody else because you gotta remember, in the time this thing is out running, I could be making money at my job, I can be designing up new stuff, I can be taking time off and going to wherever and doing whatever. I don't have to worry about it, maybe except for the email saying, hey, you, you sure you wanna run these crazy parts, Calvin? And I go, run them, it's all good. But the point is, it frees me up to do other stuff and that is what I love about it. So I hope this guy gives you guys a little bit more of a glimpse into how my process works. If you are genuinely interested in these, I will have a link down below to the Kit Bash Brothers page on Facebook where if you want to check these out, you can do so. I also will have these uploaded to my Shapeway store, but please note Shapeways charges a lot more even before I factor in a couple dollars markup for my time and effort to design these. So plan accordingly. If you're doing the Sculptail route, you get it through me. If you're doing it the Shapeways route, you're getting it through Shapeways. So just wanted to clear that up. So hope you guys enjoyed this peek into how I do things. And I will see you here next time on Make It With Calvin, where, who knows, maybe there's more Mazda stuff or more train stuff. I haven't figured out yet. See you guys later.